When it comes to getting stable, accurate boost control, the wastegate technology that we've been dealing with in the aftermarket is now pretty established and TurboSmart have long been one of the leaders in the aftermarket. It's not often that we see a new innovation in this market, but TurboSmart here at SEMA 2019 have released their new range of electronic external and internal wastegate actuators. We're here with Chris to find out a little bit more about these wastegates. Now, Chris, I'll actually take a step backwards here because I did just mention that this is a new innovation. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room because I know a lot of people will be saying, well, hey, OEs have been doing this for a while now, and that is true. How does the TurboSmart solution uh, differ from what's in the OE world at the moment? Right, so the OE applications are usually designed for a fairly optimised package, and they never really run excessive boost pressures, or they might for the high performance market, but they're designed for that particular application. Now, in our industry, say for example drag racing, we can be running upwards of say 60, 70 PSI worth of boost, and these actuators are usually found in internally actuated wastegates. Um, so when you've got a lot of drive pressure on that, you've got a lot of force acting on that flapper, and these actuators, they don't hold a position. They always need a current supply to hold them in a particular position, and they back drive as well. So what I mean by back drive is, if you apply a big enough force, the motor can't provide the holding torque, and it just moves from its target position. Right, let's just back up a little bit there. You talked about boost pressure, 60, 70 psi, but as far as the wastegate's concerned there and, and that back driving that you're talking about, the, the part that's easy to overlook for uh, most enthusiasts is that we also have a hell of a lot of back pressure in the exhaust manifold. So we've got boost pressure in the inlet manifold. It's not uncommon, particularly for some uh, non-optimised turbo packages, to see the exhaust manifold back pressure as much as double the inlet manifold pressure. So that full is trying to push the wastegate open and you've got to deal with that, correct? Correct, exactly right. So for example in our test car we've got an EFR 6258, um, we run about 34 psi in the manifold trying to max out that turbo and we can see over 55 psi in the exhaust. So it's that back pressure that you're trying to fight. So you're just saying there that the OE applications, obviously they're not dealing with uh, the sort of the performance world, they're just making an actuator that's designed for that factory application. Obviously it's going to work well there. But once you start increasing the boost pressure, seeing the exhaust manifold back pressure rise, essentially you can see a situation where those OE actuators can just be forced open? Correct, definitely. And that's even true on the OE application tuning, so for example guys using standard ECUs and reflashing them, they get so far with the boost now on these hybrid turbos that the standard actuator can't even hold its target position. Alright so let's also talk about why you've made the decision here to go to an electronic actuator, obviously you've been making uh, pneumatic actuators or mechanically uh, actuated wastegates for a long time now, the technology's uh, very well developed, where are the advantages with the electronic control? So electronic control basically gives you complete freedom. Um, you can map your boost irrespective of what boost pressure the turbo is trying to make. Sorry, you can map position. So if you want to open the wastegate for whatever reason, you can open it. You just command a position or a boost and you can try and achieve that. Are we talking the ability for these electronic wastegates to open and close faster than a conventional wastegate as well? Look, really the conventional wastegates, the rate of open and close is dependent on your pressure that's going to be seen in the canister. So if you've got really high pressure, well of course they're going to close really quick, but if you've got a low pressure you're fighting that spring as well. So you might be in a situation where the electronic actuator could be quicker, but in there's another case if you're feeding it two, 300 psi, something silly, well the mechanical actuator will close very quickly. Now that's another point that you've just sort of touched on there as well, that conventionally with a, a normal wastegate, if we want to make a, a wholesale change to our boost, obviously we've got a range of boost control, but if we want to make a large change to our boost, probably also entails changing the base spring pressure so that we're getting within a range where we can get good control. Of course with the electronic control, wastegate springs, thing of the past, don't need those. Any boost is available basically, depending on the capability of the turbo. That's right, I mean you can run basically the limit of the system, equally you can run as much boost as the turbo can provide safely, uh, and likewise you can run as low boost as you can provide as long as your wastegate path is designed properly and you've got enough bypass capability. Alright, so let's talk about the control strategy here. The uh, electronic actuator itself is quite a, a large unit and you've designed this to be able to handle that immense back pressure, as you were just taught, saying before, something that the OE actuators may struggle with. The problem we've got of course is we in the aftermarket need a way of actually controlling this. So can you talk us through uh, what the control strategy is for the electronic actuator, what inputs and outputs we're going to need in order to actually make it work? Right, so at the moment we're collecting some feedback from aftermarket issue manufacturers as well, but on this bare bones essentially the motor has a two pin drive for position, sorry for output, so that'll control the motor, and then we've got an onboard encoder which is feedbacking position. 
So to control it, at the moment we use a PWM signal and basically we convert the PWM signal, which otherwise would be a boost bleed on the solenoid, to a target position. So for example, 75% bleed on the solenoid could be 75% of its max lift. And then basically we'll map the boost table, which is your bleed, as a target position to control boost. All right, so essentially very similar to the likes of a drive-by-wire throttle body where you've got position feedback and you're using something like an H-bridge controller in the ECU to actually drive the servo motor to open and close the, the throttle body? Exactly right. It's got a feedback for position and then a H-bridge drive. Yep. Now there are some aftermarket ECUs out there already that are able to control the likes of some of these OE uh, electronic wastegate actuators. Are uh, there some problems though potentially with those crossing over to the TurboSmart? Can you talk to us about uh, the current handling capabilities? Yes, so given the large force constraints we're dealing with with these, I guess, high performance aftermarket applications, um, there's no point in us introducing an actuator that's just going to have the same problems as, as historical past. So given that situation, you have a rise in current. Now at the moment, we have rated the actuator to be a 20 amp continuous drive. Um, we have done that for a safety perspective. That's at its worst case condition. So usually operating in its, I guess, transient state trying to control boost will be under that 20 amp threshold. It could be even less than 10 amps. So some ECU manufacturers out there do have the capability to drive it as is. Um, they will be pin limited based on that package though. Now when you say pin limited, I mean obviously there's not a, a standardised aftermarket ECU connector, but the AMP Super Seal is just one that springs to mind because it is so common. And with the AMP Super Seal pins, you're yeah, sort of current limited to a little bit under sort of 10 amps or thereabouts. So uh, what's the solution there? Can they use multiple pins? That's right. I believe, look, this will be up to the ECU manufacturers really to answer. Um, I can't speak for them on their behalf, but I mean, look, we've been getting some feedback at the moment and it seems to be possible based on the current configuration they have. All right, so in terms of other control strategies, uh, is it something where TurboSmart could look at developing uh, your own standalone controller that then could be more conventionally controlled with an aftermarket ECU with the likes of a, a conventional low current PWM output? Yeah, look, I mean, there's obviously many, many ECUs out there at the moment and people as of today are investing in an ECU that is very good at what it can do. So we need to look at that and say, right, we want to support this as well because obviously they want to use the latest products that we sell. So there will be an intermediate box, basically, if you like, a high bridge drive um, that will link between the ECU and also the wastegate as well to provide that high current. All right, so just coming back to the capabilities of the wastegate, you've talked about the amount of force it can apply or the amount of back pressure that it can withstand. Can we actually put some numbers around that, sort of how much force can it apply to the wastegate valve and how much back pressure can that withstand? Sure, so we've rated it to about 80 psi worth of exhaust manifold pressure. Now obviously that could be more in your manifold or less depending on how efficient your engine is. Uh, in terms of force, that could be around 1200 newtons or 1.2 kilonewtons and that's in a transient state. In a stall torque situation that force drastically goes up but we won't quote those numbers because we don't we shouldn't be operating in that range basically. And now that 80 psi back pressure you just quoted as well I uh, understand that's on your 60 mil wastegate so if you drop down to the likes of the smaller wastegates that actually increases? Correct so if we use the same control actuator on the 60 mil and put it on a 40 mil valve that exhaust manifold pressure rating could be upwards of 150 psi. Probably safe to say it's going to be more than enough for most people. Now the other aspect that uh, I've seen on the stand here that's a little unique, sort of goes hand in hand with the uh, electronic control, is you've moved away or got an option to move away from a poppet style wastegate to a essentially a butterfly style wastegate actuator or wastegate valve, much like we see in a conventional throttle body. So can you talk to us about the advantages or pros and cons of going to a butterfly style wastegate? Right, so from our perspective we've got the butterfly valve that we've introduced. Um, I think it's going to have much more benefits over the poppet valve. So first you're going to have much better control. Um, butterfly valves are inherently designed to control mass flow. So from a waste skating perspective you're going to have much good control over what's going on in the exhaust and what's being bypassed. Not only that, you've got a package constraint. So for a given valve size you're going to outflow a poppet. So we've got a 50 mil orifice butterfly valve and that outflows our 60 which is our largest waste gate. Having said that, on the low blade angle, we've got the control of a 40 mil wastegate as well. So from the outset, we've got one butterfly valve that can provide all the solutions of external wastegates at the moment. Now one of the problems of course with anything that's in the exhaust system is it's got to handle that heat and uh, the way the poppet style valve works you've got that valve seat so essentially as the valve heats up and the body of the wastegate heats up it's still going to seal you've got an angled seat that it can basically grow on. 
is that a problem with a butterfly style as the housing and the butterfly grow? Is there an issue there with trying to maintain a really solid seal when it is close? You've got no boost leaks? Right. So sorry, sorry, no exhaust leaks? Right, I understand. It's similarly to the poppet valve. I mean, we're dealing with a lot of exhaust temperature through that system. And we've also got a valve guide there as well. So we need to maintain a particular clearance in that system. And we've gone through years of development trying to optimize that. It's the same technology for the butterfly. We're using very similar materials as well. So we know what those rates are. We've got experience with those materials and we've implemented that technology into the butterfly. And we're not using the butterfly as a conventional throttle body butterfly where they don't really seal. Um, these have two positive stops that the butterfly goes home to seal against at all times. Look, Chris, it's been really interesting to see something that is truly innovative in the aftermarket boost control uh, world and uh, we look forward to seeing it come out and be available to consumers. Can you give us some indication of when that might be? Uh, the poppet valve should be available early next year. All right, thanks for the chat Chris. Right, thank you very much. If you liked that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week and if you like free stuff we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.